Jingle bells, jingle bells. I've been told this is a cowbell, but it was the closest and most festive I could get at the last minute without making foil antlers, which was also pitched to me. I would have said yes. Hello, guys. Welcome to the final Real Simple Cooking School of the year. I hope you guys have learned so much and have cooked along all year long. Um, today, we are talking about, because it's what, T minus six days or five if you gather on Christmas Eve, um, we're going to talk about last minute gifts. These happen to be edible gifts, great for hostess gifts, great for just like gifting to whomever. Um, but I'm going to show you maybe the easiest one I know how to make. I probably made these hundreds of times. Um, great for gifting, great for entertaining. We'll go over some puff pastry best practices because we could always use a refresher. And that's what we're going to do. Are you ready? Woo! Woo! Okay, we'll quickly go over the rules. Remember, this is a constructive teaching kitchen and I aim to keep it that way. We have two rules. One, we wash our hands. I just did it. There's soap today. Um, and two, we play nice. If you don't have anything nice to say, you are now dismissed, okay? So let's get cooking. Okay, we're going to make these things called seeded twists. Brooke, drop the link. She did it. Okay, so this was part of actually our November um, entertaining package. I just put together a few really easy kind of edible or drinkable gifts that you could either make for party favors or bring to a host or hostess um, as a thank you for, for having you. But um, there's some shortbread nuggets we're checking out. There's a little Negroni to go also we're checking out. But these seeded twists are so easy. Um, I always keep a package of puff pastry in my freezer. It's great for sort of like fancier moments like this, but it's also really good for really fast pizzas and stuff like that. Um, keep it on hand. This is, if you're familiar at all, this is one square, uh, one trifold of Pepperidge Farm puff pastry. Now, you can find um, a few other brands are widely available. Dufour is one. What I like about Dufour is it's all butter, um, but Pepperidge Farm is really readily available. It's really easy to use. It's very consistent and like always turns out the same way. So whatever you can find, great. Um, this is one square. It comes like this in a little, you know, like brochure style fold. The biggest tip I can give you about working with puff pastry is thaw it according to package directions. And this kind of goes for most packaged goods, like rice, quinoa, um, even like bags of dried beans. If you're not sure how to cook it or like don't always remember, just read the bag. That's gonna be the best guide. Same goes for thawing puff pastry, and not all brands will thaw the same. I think um, Dufour, that other brand, recommends you thaw it overnight in the fridge. Pepperidge Farm wants you to defrost on your work surface for 40 minutes at room temperature and like that's it. Um, it really, it works, but also too much, the puff pastry, you know, it's full of butter. It will become too soft, really hard to work with and especially because it comes in this fold, will start to stick to itself. So that gets really challenging. Um, too cold, it'll crack, especially when you unfold it. So you guys get, you're getting the message, follow the directions. It just, you know, best not to, best not to go off script there. Um, okay, so now you can see it comes in a square like this. And it's lightly floured and actually, I'm gonna recommend lightly flouring the surface as well because we just wanna roll it out a little bit bigger. I'm going for a 10 to 18 inch rectangle. These are really forgiving. It does not have to be that perfect um, measurement, but if we cut our breadsticks, you'll see in a few minutes how we do that. From this, they'd be really thick and really short. So we just want to get more out of this. So if you guys watch our recent um, cookie decorating videos with our friend Jason Schreiber, um, we did do some dough rolling tips. Same rules apply when working with puff pastry. This is a dowel style rolling pin. I believe this is a French style rolling pin because it's tapered, but I could be wrong. Anyway, doesn't matter what kind of rolling pin you have, whatever is more comfortable for you. But you wanna start in the center of your dough, wherever that is, and roll toward the outside. Some folks like to only roll away. I'm comfortable rolling away and towards myself. 
And because we're going for 10 to 18, like that's longer, right? You guys get the idea. And you can also see, because the dough is like a, still a little bit cool, it will start to bounce back. It will do that less as it comes to room temperature, but it's really, it's, there's a sweet spot, because too warm and it's too sticky and it's really hard to work with. Um, too cold and it won't go very far, or it'll tear. So you just gotta kind of like stand by if it's too stiff or it won't roll, just, you know, like go wash a dish or take five deep breaths, something like that. But we probably won't get all the way to 18 inches. Also, this surface is like actually pretty nonstick as it is. So the dough isn't sticking at all, which ultimately is a good thing, but a little bit of stickage is okay because it would help me get a little bit longer. But you guys will be able to see what what happens next and how this goes. Any questions so far about puff pastry, about edible gifts? Nope. Nope. Do you remind people what we're making? Yes, of course. Guys, today we are making just really easy seeded twists. So it's like a fancy breadstick that you can offer as a snack while you're entertaining or hosting this holiday season or package it up as a gift. Um, for just, you know, like family, friends, or two hosts and hostesses. Okay, we've got our puff pastry. Ideally 10 to 10 inches by 18 inches, but like, it really doesn't matter. You'll see why. Egg. One egg, it doesn't matter what size. You guys know, we've talked about this before, that when baking, we really wanna use large eggs. I'd say 99% of baking recipes are written for large eggs, except Ina's, that's right, she likes extra large eggs. I don't know why, but um, it doesn't matter what size egg you use for this because we're just gonna use it as a little egg wash. It's gonna help our seed mixture stick. So just beat it up with a fork. This is a pastry brush. If you do a lot of pastry work, these are great to invest in. They're very inexpensive. Um, they also make silicone brushes, which are nice because you can use them like on a grill or in the oven to baste meats and stuff. I like to keep one for pastry stuff and one for like meat stuff. So I'm just gonna give my dough a little brush with the egg. Not too thick, cause it's gonna get like gloopy and weird. Just like a thin layer, a primer if you will. If your dough is like really floury before you start, keep your pastry brush dry for a sec and just brush off any of the excess flour and then give it a little wipe, not a rinse because that's gonna make the flour clump up, but just give it like a little wipe with a towel to take off that excess and then go into your egg wash. Does that make sense? And make sure you go all the way to the edge so the seeds will stick all over. Okay. That's it. And now this is my seed mixture. So in here I have two teaspoons each, cumin seed, caraway seed, and celery seed, plus one and a half teaspoons of flaky salt. Now, the good thing is you can kind of mix this up however you like. This combination is like super savory. Um, the caraway makes it taste like kind of like rye bread, um, but you could use some crushed coriander seed if you like, you could add, crushed red pepper if you want something spicy. Um, I had a good idea as I was making these earlier. Well, one, you can definitely use cheese. So like you could use a combination of Parmesan and Pecorino, but you could turn these into like a pizza inspired breadstick and do a combination of Parmesan, red pepper flake and oregano. Is that a good idea? Yes. yes, everyone in this room agrees. Okay, so just wanna sprinkle those over evenly and not necessary, and like I don't even think I put it in the recipe, but one thing I like to do is just give the seed mixture a little bit of a roll once it's sprinkled on. It's just gonna help it, whoops, stick, you can see, to the dough. So just be careful. Okay, there you have it. So now we gotta cut these up. Yes, you can use a knife, totally fine. I'm just gonna clean this up so you guys can see a little bit better. But this is a, a, a time when I like to use a pizza cutter. Pizza cutters, especially when you're cutting stuff like this, like sugar cookies, if you're not using cutters, um, these kind of breadsticks, anything long, 
knives can get like kind of stuck as you go. They can get tacky. The dough can be tacky and stick to your blade. The pizza cutter tends to just like roll on through a little bit easier. Also, now th these don't have to be perfect long strips, but I find it easier if you spot, if you like look where you're going, like the car, you're more likely to get there with the pizza cutter than if you use a knife. Does that make sense? So like, I'm just gonna eyeball it. We're gonna go about half inch thick. And then you might have to kind of hold it down to get you started. The only thing is some of the seeds, like you'll have to cut right through them. So just give it a little pressure. But see, and then I just, I'm like looking at my goal at the end. So like, don't watch the blade, watch the dough. So like, don't watch, like when you're driving, and your parents were like, don't look right in front of you. And you're like, where am I supposed to look? And they're like, three cars ahead. And you're like, oh, that makes a lot more sense. OK, so we keep going. Now, if you did this right, and you know, like, there's right and there's wrong, and there's like yummy breadsticks. If you actually rolled this to an 18-inch length, and you cut these in a half inch, you'd get how many? 36. <laughs> Come on, guys. So anyway, but it really doesn't matter how many you get. Um, 36 will fill about two sheet trays. So like, start with two, line it with parchment paper. But like, if you get a few more or a few less, like, no big deal. I do think it's a good idea if you've got the time. I mean, you can see like, this is not taking very much time and we're almost done with the active part of it. Um, if you've got the time, set aside an hour, make like a couple batches of this and keep any extras in the freezer before you bake them. Um, and then you can just bake them off like whenever people drop by. I feel like that happens a lot this time of year. And you'll be good to go. Okay, see? Pretty easy, right? Now, two parchment line baking sheets. All we have to do now is make them into the twists, right? So the easiest way to do it is, and like, Frankly, you could just bake it like that. It'd be pretty. But to take it up a notch, you start from the middle. And for whatever reason, this is easier for me to do right on the surface. But you start from the middle, and then you just twist outwards like that. You can do a lot of twists. You can do just a few twists. And that's it. Any questions about this? About these easy seeded twists? Yeah. Easy seeded twists? <laughs> Brooke, what you got? Priscilla wants to know if you know of anyone that makes a gluten-free puff pastry. Oh, wow. Really good question. Does anyone make a gluten-free puff pastry? I actually don't know, but <clears throat> I might start, because <laughs> that sounds like a million dollar idea. Um, yeah, but, but real simple, cooking schoolers, if anyone out there is aware of a a gluten-free puff pastry, go for it. Um, I'm trying to think of alternatives. You know, I mean, I, I'm not as well-versed in the gluten-free um, prepared goods market as maybe I should be, but um, you know what you could use is I believe they make gluten-free pie dough, right? Or you could make um, our classic pie dough, Brooke, maybe you can drop the link. And you could do this with the pie dough. I just maybe wouldn't twist it. Um, that dough tends to be like more tender and flaky, so it'll be less sturdy. But if, even if you just rolled it out into a circle, brush it with the egg, same thing, and cut it in strips and then bake the strips, that could be really good. I think that's a good gluten-free idea. Also worth a million dollars. Great question. Tips on packaging edible gifts. What I would do, like six to eight weeks ago, is order some or like swing by a Michaels um, for some cello bags. And that just is like a clear plastic bag um, in a couple different sizes. As you can see, like these are kind of long. But that said, you could, you could of course, like cut these. In fact, I'll do that for a couple of these. You can always just cut them right in half like this, for shorter ones. So anyway, these cello bags, um, I like them because you can see what's in there when you're giving. 
but ball jars are a nice way to give gifts. Also, <clears throat> people can reuse them and no plastic. I don't know if anyone saw 60 Minutes last week, but like the plastic problem is really bad. Um, so please keep that in mind when you are wrapping <laughs> this year. Also, um, what I would recommend for any edible gift is just include the recipe. So like print it on a little card, um, tie it with a little ribbon, and then it feels like, you know, teaching a person to fish, you know? Breaking okay. news. Breaking news. Found gluten-free puff pastry. Wow, who makes gluten-free puff pastry? It's called, it's from a company called Genius Gluten-Free, and okay. I dropped the link. Great, I can't wait to try it. Genius Gluten-Free. If you are watching, please send samples. <laughs> we would love to try this. Okay, and I'm running out of a little bit of room, but that's okay. The good news is, we're gonna freeze these until firm. If you remember from some of our other dough episodes, cold dough, when baked, will hold its shape. It's because cold butter, which this is full of, um, takes longer to melt. So um, these twists will stay twisty rather than like unspool into like just regular old sticks. So we're gonna pop these in the freezer <clears throat> to get them really firm. That's gonna take about 15 minutes. Um, at least 15 minutes, but you could freeze them for like three months. So once they're firm, you could transfer them to a resealable bag, even though I don't know what the solution is for freezing not in plastic. So also someone help and tell me, um, because stuff does get freezer burned if it's not like really tightly wrapped. That's another story. Okay, but you're gonna pop these in the freezer, freeze until firm, and then you can wrap them up so they take up more, they take up less room and you get your sheet trays back, okay? Just gonna pop them in the freezer. And lucky you, I already froze some. And you'll see how firm these are. That I can pick them up, you know. See how firm? I'm not gonna flick it. I mean, I guess I could. Notice. But you know, they're pretty sturdy at this point. Which is nice because then you can like make sure there's enough space. You could be like, eh, I feel like these are kind of crowded. I'm going to put them on two trays or whatever. See how easy? Jerry, question. They ask, is this, is puff pastry dough the same as phyllo or like crescent roll dough? Really good question. Is puff pastry the same as phyllo dough or phyllo dough? I don't know if there's a right way. Um, or crescent roll dough. So crescent roll dough is puff pastry in a way, it's, it's a laminated dough, which means it's laminated with layers and butter. Um, but I would say it's not gonna behave the same. Also, the crescent roll dough, you know, like it's already perforated in those triangles. So that might present challenges. Um, <clears throat> so phyllo dough is actually, it can be challenging to work with. Phyllo dough is, are very, very thin layers of dough. Um, with little to no fat. It's like a very lean dough. And that's what like baklava or like spanakopita, use a lot of like Greek dishes, very thin, very flaky, um, bakes up like golden and almost feathery. So different thing. I'm not sure that would be the best swap here, but we can absolutely do a phyllo uh, lesson in the new year. It's a good idea. I hope that helps. Okay, so these are frozen, gonna go into a 425 degree oven um, for not very long, like seven to 10 minutes. This is something that has been happening lately. Even when your oven is preheated to a certain temp, the longer it's on, I find it tends to get like a little hotter and a little hotter, even though like the oven gods sort of promise you like, no, no, we're gonna like keep it right at 425. Yes and no. So like. The batch that I just baked that I'm gonna show you took about 12 minutes, even though the recipe says seven to 10. I have baked these in seven minutes. So point being, remember, the times are a guide. So set your timer for seven minutes, but then take a look. If they're like pale um, and like they still look this color, keep it going, at least three more minutes, okay? But if you get to the end of the range and you're like, I don't know, these like don't quite look done. It's okay, add another minute. And then add another minute if you need to, remember, that is a guideline, not a rule. Your oven is different, the weather is different, your egg is different, 
So you gotta give yourself some wiggle room, okay? Okay, 425, seven to 10 minutes. And after that, they look like this. So pretty, right? So now, I, I have spoken about this many times in the past, but I'll say America underbakes her pastry. This is true. Um, I tend to like, especially like my pies and stuff like that, like deep, dark, golden brown. That's when all of that like caramelization and like brown butter flavor comes out in baked goods. That said, puff pastry, especially in this scenario where like it's just the puff and the seeds, there's no like cheese or extra like rich filling to go with, you don't want to overbake it because it can get really dry really fast and kind of brittle. So I'd say go to golden brown. Think about it. Golden brown. Okay? And stop there. Okay, so pop these in cello bags. You know, you could do like a little, you could do a lot, or this is like a cute entertaining thing. If you're having people over, just like pop these on the table in the middle. And it's like a cute centerpiece and a little snicky snacky. It's so nice, right? Jerry's amused. Okay, guys, that's it. How easy was that? For more edible gifts, head over to realsimple.com. Um, I hope you guys have a really great holiday. Please, like, get some rest. Watch a movie. Um, cook something yum, but, like, not if it's going to stress you out. Because the point is to like keep it simple, right? Okay, have a great holiday. I'll see you in the new year. So long. Thanks for cooking with me.